Would you like to initiate consciousness? Mascot 3000 Consciousness Initiated. Protogens. Cute, fluffy beans in the furry fandom, but in reality a species filled with a rich and dark lore. Complete with brainwashing, body augmentations, and elite kill squads, the protogens, once created, are now their own entity. Hi internet, my name is Rael the Protogen, and in this video, I'm going to go over all the lore about the protogens. Where they came from, who made them, and where they are now. We'll explore every corner of Zenith's Outer Reach, currently available to us, and piece together this Star Trek-rich, like, story. And we'll answer some questions about what a protogen even is, and how the primogenitors, a super-advanced alien race, created them from an ancient DNA soup. Before we start, all this information is currently available on Cool Koinu's Patreon for free. So if you'd like to read everything yourself, make sure to check out the link in the description to a document provided by the creator of both the protogens and the primogens themselves. A link will also be down there to their link tree where there is more up-to-date information. The first question we should answer is, what even is a protogen? A protogen is anything you want it to be. Of course, this is dependent on the level of DNA infusion during the incubation period, but we'll get into that later. What makes a protogen a protogen are the artificial enhancements made during the incubation period. The most prominent being their visor, which is made up of mostly nanites that can form different shapes depending on the use case for that specific protogen. The limbs of a protogen are interchangeable depending on the environment that that protogen will inhabit for their service. These can range from aquatech tails and webbed hands, paws, and ears for easier swimming in aquatic regions, to long ears and thin tails for heat dispersal and balance during sprinting in hot, arid environments. Almost all of the parts on a protogen are completely modular. The protogens, much like the Borg from Star Trek, are augmented shortly after being fully incubated. They're then put through a series of VR simulations that can range from combat, exploration, flight, seafaring, and anything else the primogenitors may have needed them for that they wouldn't otherwise do themselves. They were created by the primogenitors in order to take care of missions that they deemed too dangerous or too menial for them. Protogens were basically an army that could be created from this DNA goop and turned into slaves by the primogenitors by brainwashing them and augmenting them with archite. What is archite? Basically magical crystals, but we'll get into that. Protogens can have a variety of traits. Most common protogens you see have the least amount of DNA infusion during the incubation period. They are left this way on purpose to be subordinate to their creators, as their disposition has been tempered through nanite infusion to fit the needs of the primogenitors. These protogens would be sent out to war, incapable of free will, and completely under the control and guidance of their superiors and creators. The primogenitors would have used these common protogens for anything and everything they deemed too menial or dangerous to themselves. Common protogens most likely would have been seen as defense and combat forces or medical response teams. They could have also been basic vehicle operators and construction workers. Uncommon protogens are protogens that have had up to 50% of their DNA altered and infused, and are usually seen with more complex traits like horns and multiple sets of ears. And they are also more free-willed than their common counterparts. Uncommon protogens would most likely be seen operating war vehicles like subatmospheric fighter jets, researching disease and viruses, operating a security detail at high-profile events, or possibly being seen as archive technicians. 
rare protogens are hardly ever seen within Zenith's outer reach. These protogens usually have a 50% or higher infusion rate of DNA during the incubation period and prove to be dangerous to the primogenitors. They are seen with more complex traits, such as floating horns, three sets of ears, and have access to flight, they might have multiple limb sockets, and their nanite functions are more complex than their previous counterparts. On more than one occasion, a rare protogen may have been able to overthrow its creators and gain complete and utter free will, breaking free from the primogenitor's control and becoming its own conscious being. Along with this free will, they were also prone to nanite instabilities, and may have seen their own body disintegrate while alive. Rare protogens may have been seen in elite kill squads or as highly adept warriors. These protogens may have been highly specialized in combat, which makes them extremely dangerous to the primogenitors. The DNA of protogens originates from a synapsid species located within the Redis Nebula within Zenith's outer reach. Primogenitors wanted to create a sentient, modular being that could learn and adapt on its own without the upkeep or maintenance needed to sustain artificial life. AI, while being very efficient, still struggled to grasp a hold of the concept of self-preservation, and still struggled to learn and adapt to its environment on an ever-changing world of dangers and possibilities. The scientists turned to biological and cybernetic fusion as the best alternative, and on the 12th cycle of Xenus Outer Reach, the primogenitors started the production and creation of the protogens through their DNA extractions. Data about the protogen DNA origins remains highly classified by primogenitor scientists, but all available data points to the species being incredibly adaptable to most environments. This piqued the primogenitor's interests as they would be a viable candidate for use in extreme conditions, such as warfare, mining, space exploration, and construction, since they could be grown and produced in mass in laboratories. Once the ideal DNA specimen was acquired, Project ARC was born. ARC stands for Artificial Remote Control, meaning primogenitor scientists infused microcrystalline archites into the cerebral fluid of the protogen. This essentially gave the primogenitors complete and total domination and control over the protogens. The protogen DNA was taken to a production facility on Esmeyer 4, where the primogenitors fertilized cloned embryos and grew them in specially made incubation chambers meant to simulate womb-like conditions. At 7 days, the protogen's organs and limbs have formed. At 14 days, it's grown fur and is almost completely formed. After 21 days, or just under one average Earth month, protogen is fully grown and is now too big for its chamber. It's removed from the chamber and augmented with their cybernetic components and put into artificial synchronization and training for an additional 14 days. The purpose of the artificial synchronization is to force the biological parts of the protogen's body to accept the cybernetic implants and augmentation. Without this, the body of the protogen would most likely tear itself apart or fail to function properly. Every protogen created by the primogenitors has a unique DNA alteration tailored for the specific use case of that particular protogen determined by the primogenitors. Each one can be uniquely coded for a specific task or for specific work. The primogenitors can also determine the exact size, weight, and bodily features with this DNA alteration and create a protogen uniquely suited for the task that is required of it. The body of the protogen was specifically grown to withstand these augmentations, as some protogens would be construction workers, and others may be entertainers or waiters. Some would be pilots, and some would be exploring the outer reaches of Zenith's outer reach. The cybernetic enhancements are made and augmented into the protogens, and the protogen is placed inside a hyper-specialized medical pod called a sync pod. The protogen needs time to sync to its cybernetic augmentations. The sync pod is a medical pod designed and meant to give the biological and cybernetic parts time to merge together properly. The protogen isn't yet born, however. Consciousness would not be acquired until the cybernetic and biological parts have successfully merged together. Now physically complete, the protogen is hooked up to a brain monitor and is administered a direct neural input of basic functionality, purpose, and training. Once fully born and conscious, the protogen will be able to function on its own and be fully operational. However, it'll still be watched over to ensure that the archite levels in the protogen do not exceed or fall below a certain threshold, which could destroy them. Training takes place in virtual reality.
The protogens built are placed in specialized VR chambers and administered training to further enhance physical and mental capabilities. They can also be trained for a specific job or for a specific purpose at this stage, making them fully capable in their performance of their purpose on their first day of life. While in VR, the protogen learns to move its limbs and hands. It learns to walk, read, write, and communicate. Once the protogen has completed all the VR training and has shown satisfactory archite synchronization, it's transported away from the production facility. Manual labor and demand for protogens increase by the beginning of the 13th cycle of Xenus Outer Reach. At the beginning of this cycle, war was also at hand, and demand for military units skyrocketed. Because the protogens were built with the archites and could be manufactured at a staggering rate, they were readily available to fill these roles. They would be subservient to the primogenitor's needs and be able to fill the voids where needed. Because the protogens were created and born in a lab, they were treated the same way as AI. Protogens were expendable. They lacked free will and didn't think for themselves, only what they were told to think about. Protogens had no individual rights and as a consequence were left abandoned or destroyed when they were no longer useful and their purpose fulfilled. Oftentimes, protogens may have been abandoned on a battlefield, left to just decay. However, there were a few outliers to this. Some protogens had been further developed, and as such, when they weren't abandoned or destroyed, they often suffered from archite failures or instabilities. Experiments were conducted on these particular protogens to create a deadlier, more elite class of protogens with more functionality than their previous counterparts. These protogens were augmented with multiple limbs, flight functions, and complex mutations that often caused the archites to short. This would be the start of the downfall for the primogenitor's control over the protogens, as they have effectively just made their own worst enemy. It was with these experiments that the elite class of protogens known as rares were born. Their additional augmentations made them more powerful than the other protogens before them, giving them conscious free will. The rares turned against their masters. Somewhere during this cycle, it was observed that some abandoned protogens had created their own small colonies on one of Esmire IV's moons. Starved and determined harmless, the primogenitors paid no attention to them. However, the fugitive rares had been secretly training themselves to use the power they now possessed with the Archites. They began developing skills with the Archite, an ancient dimensional power that allows them to manipulate energy and gave them kinetic abilities. This would in turn be the key to releasing the infused archites on other protogens and themselves and allow them to reach full and free, conscious free will. This power was strong enough to cause archite instabilities in the protogens, which previously was only observed in rare variants. This resulted in an all-out war and rebellion against the primogenitors, otherwise known as the Protogen Rebellion. The war had split the primogenitors into two factions, the Scientica and the Nahixum. The Scientica commended the abilities of the protogens to advance their cognizance enough to gain free will, and commended their ability to fight back for their own survival. The Scientica preferred to live in peace alongside the protogens in coexistence to both of their mutual benefits. The Nahixum faction considered the protogen experiment a complete and colossal failure, and suggested rooting out all defective protogens to terminate or reconfigure them. They saw no life alongside their creation, and would have rather seen them destroyed. So the primogenitor factions fought amongst themselves about what to do with the protogens. The protogens, now with their own free will, and wanting to proceed with their existence, created their own society on one of the moons of Esmire IV, known as E1. It was terraformed and deemed the capital of the protogen species. And on this moon, protogens were able to live freely and happily. They were able to master and study Archai, and live on their own free will however they see fit. The protogens and primogenitors decided, eventually, against mutually assured destruction, and instead decided to live in a semi-peaceful symbiotic relationship. Esmire IV was the birthplace of a new but ancient species. Experimented on, built, created, and destroyed, it has now given life to a new being of protogens. You can't talk about protogens without talking about one of their main features, the nanites that make up their visor and aid the protogens in digestion. Most people don't know it, but protogens need to consume food in order to keep their biological parts healthy and active. This means that protogens have a semi-complete digestive tract, complete with a throat and tongue. The nanites within their digestive tracts allow a protogen to have a near-perfect digestion. 
The Nainites break down food to the point where there is little to no waste. Most of the waste is in the form of gas. What they can't digest, they regurgitate like an owl. They can also have small mechanical systems that aid in breaking down small amounts of metal in their body. Protogens have a fully functional respiratory system and cardiovascular system. All the biological parts of a protogen need nutrients and elements from the air to function properly, much like how you need to breathe oxygen and nitrogen to supply the cells in your body. But you might be asking yourself, how does a protogen eat or breathe with a plane of glass over their face? The short answer is, it's not glass, it's nanites. The nanites are able to let air in while breathing and could also function as a sort of environmental filter to keep particulates, viruses, bacteria, and fungi out of the sensitive respiratory system. A protogen can open its mouth to consume food for the nutrients its biological parts need. This might look like a ferrofluid liquid while processing, or a hole in the visor opens up to give the protogen access to its own mouth. Though, in case of an emergency, they can survive off electrical, archai, or some other form of power. They're only able to do this for a short time though because their biological components still need nutrients to continue functioning properly. In very rare cases, and only ever seen on rare variant protogens, they're able to control their nanites and form them into shapes such as shields, whips, barriers, and in even rarer instances, duplicating themselves entirely. The trait is only ever found on the rare variants of the protogens, and is something the primogenitors currently really don't know much about. While being essential to digestion and for being the iconic look of the protogen visor, another special group of nanites serve as super powerful magnets to connect the limbs of the protogen together. Because they're connected like this, they allow for a solid connection to the joint and they can also transmit and send neural data to the brain. Being able to connect limbs in this fashion means a protogen can quickly remove and replace a damaged part when necessary or even change their limbs for a specific job or environment. The visor of the protogen specifically is made out of millions of small nanites, about 20,000 to 100,000 nanometers inside. This is smaller than what can be observed by the naked human eye, but it could also give the visor a glass or metal type appearance. These nanites are the shield from the outside world. It protects the protogen from illness and viruses. On the surface of the visor, the nanites are capable of moving around freely and fluidly, and in some cases act as a sort of immune response system when the visor gets cracked. The visor is specifically important to the protogens because it's all that separates them from disease. If the visor becomes cracked, the nanites rush to congeal in place and protect the internal barrier, which contains blood and other bodily fluids. If for some reason a protogen is hit with enough blunt force trauma to crack the internal barrier of the visor, it'll usually lead to permanent damage to the protogen, and maybe even in some cases, death. The nanites serve to also enhance a protogen's vision allowing them to have a sort of HUD. With these nanites, they could possibly also have access to thermal vision or other optical enhancements. Just like any living and organic being, protogens are still prone to birth defects and viruses. What makes it especially dangerous for protogens is their biological components can get sick and their cybernetic components can get sick. The two together very much stands a chance at causing an archive fallout or causing severe damage to the protogen. Tactical issues are bound to happen with any electronic component. A limb might stop functioning, nanites on the visor may fail to congeal correctly and look soupy and become completely fluid, or there may be power fluctuations that affect the nanites and the body as a whole. One such disease is known as JRS. It's a rare condition, more commonly known as nanite restart syndrome, but eventually became known as jumpy robab syndrome. JRS is a rare condition in which the internal nanite cells fall into an on-off loop. It causes the system to repeatedly and rapidly shut down and restart, making the protogen jump or jolt around. It rarely ever causes harm to the protogen, but can often be dangerous or even fatal to those unlucky few who happen to be nearby. While hacking it hasn't been as big of an issue since the creation of the primogens, it's still possible to hack a protogen and take over its systems. Viruses implanted via a hack can cause violent glitching, and limb incompatibility. While viruses may be a rare occurrence for protogens, it's still possible on two different fronts. The protogen can get sick or have a mechanical and electrical failure, leaving them helpless. The primogenitors most likely would have left these protogens to fail. Thank you Treejar for helping me out with this video. I don't think I would have been able to get it out as quickly if it wasn't for your help. Treejar is one of the admin teams that's responsible for writing parts of the lore for the protogens, so they were able to guide me through the script and fix some things that I had wrong originally. Uh, and also to Zillion Ross for letting me use his artwork in this video. Thank you so much. And honestly, like it was so much fun to do and I wanna do more like this. If you guys wanna see more, make sure to like the video 
Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It lets me know that you guys want to see more of this kind of thing. I've never done a deep dive on a species before, so honestly, I'm very happy I did this. I learned a lot about the protogens that I didn't know before because a lot of stuff has been updated and a lot of stuff wasn't there when I read it originally. And especially thank you to the patrons. Without your help, I don't think I would have been able to get this video out as quickly or as fluidly, so thank you guys so much. Anyway, that's the end of the video. If you guys did like the video, make sure to leave a like, make sure to comment on it, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more stuff like this in the future. This video was a lot of fun to do and I definitely want to do more like this in the future. So yeah, thank you guys. Bye.